Roses are red and violets are blue. I'm going to use a planer sled to flatten you. To do so, I built one of torsion box design to joint my board so flat and so fine. And if you watch this video through, I will explain how to make one just for you. So for those of you who don't know Torsion Box, I'm going to put up a graphic right here on the screen to uh, show you exactly what it looks like. It's basically, it's just a lattice work of interior supports between two skins. So this here is just simply a, I actually have a piece of it right here. It's just a one by six pine from the local hardware store. That's all it is. That's all the webbing is. I just ripped it in half and then I cut my, uh, my edge pieces here, which were 48 inches. And then these pieces here, which are 10 and a quarter inches wide. Again, that's for an 11 and three quarter inch wide sled. I have nine of those in there. And then I've got spacer pieces that go between each of them. And those I believe are like four and something. I forget exactly. All I did is I just staggered my, I spaced out my stringers evenly. I think they're, yeah, they're six inches on center apart from each other. And then I just measured what the gap was between two. And that's what I cut my, my, um, my other pieces from. So once I had everything cut, I just double checked everything, make sure every, all the pieces had to be the exact same width. That's very important for the center skin. If they're a little bit different, a couple of them that can throw off your, your skins, which we want to make sure our skin pieces are perfectly flat. So, so what I did is I just used the flattest surface in my shop, which is my table saw. I used that to assemble the actual frame on. I put the first one, I used clamps to hold it in place until I got a couple more on and then I took that clamps off. So then just glued and brad nailed the entire inner structure together. And then after that was complete, I just took the, um, I forget which side I did first, but I took one of the skins, I, glu I put glue over the entire inner structure and then I took the skin, I put it on, brad nail all the way across. Now, in order to make sure I hit my nails in my pieces going across our box. I took my combination square. I lined it up with the nail marks on the edge here, right? Because I had nailed in from the sides. So I knew that's where a piece running across was. I took a combination square, put it across, ran a pencil line, I just nailed across there. And did that all the way down. Flipped it over, put the other skin on, same exact way. And that was pretty much it as far as construction goes. Um, I did add this stop block on the back here. So this is gonna be the back part. You're gonna put all, you're gonna put that end down there in first when you go putting it through your planer. And then this will be the back, right? So this is the last piece to go through. The point of this is that if the planer grabs a board, you didn't secure it properly to your sled and the piece grabs and it kicks back out of the planer, which can happen, it'll hit this and lessen the chances that it's gonna fly back into your shop, potentially hit you, hit something else. So that's why this is here. It's just to be a stop block. So once I had it assembled, I hit it with sandpaper. I sanded it from 60 to 80 to 120 to 220 and got it perfectly, well, not perfectly, but very smooth. Um, removed all my pencil lines, stuff like that. Once that was done, I then hit it with three coats of Minwax Polycrylic clear coat. The whole point of that is to seal it so that moisture can't get in and make the wood move, right? So I sealed the top, I sealed the sides, I sealed the ends, and I sealed the bottoms. All sides of it got hit with it, and that just basically encapsulates it and prevents moisture from getting in. A couple of reasons I chose polyacrylic. Number one is if it gets damaged, it's extremely easy to repair. Pretty much just apply more on top of it. It has a fast dry time, so I can then re reuse my sled soon. I don't have to wait 24 hours for an oil-based polyurethane to dry. It's also low VOCs. I just prefer to work with it when I can. Because this is a piece that's gonna stay with me, I'm not sending it off to a customer, I don't mind using a potentially inferior finish, right? One that's maybe not as durable. All right, so this is the next day now. I've put three coats of polyurethane, the water-based poly, polycrylic on here, and it is nice and smooth. After that, what I did is I hit it with, uh, on the top, I hit it with 400 grit sandpaper just to knock down a couple of the bumps that were left on it. And then the bottom side I hit with two, another uh, round of 220. And then on the bottom, I applied a layer of wax to help reduce the friction between this and the planer. In order to use this, what we're going to do is I'm going to demonstrate um, how I would use it using some little red oak, almost like four by fours that I have to plane down. 
All right, so for those of you who did not see my other video that I made on the planer sled, the way that I do it is I use uh, hot glue. It's very simple, very easy. So on a beam like this where you put it down and then you tap the corners to try to figure out the most rock, right? Because that's what you want is you want the parts with the most rock. And if I'm, the way I'm feeling it, this end here is sitting solid. This side over here is not, this side over here is not, this side's not. So I know it's going up, right? So the piece is basically doing this. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hot glue and I'm going to put four globs, one here, one here, one here, one here. So by using those globs of glue, if you do it right and you use enough, what that'll do is that'll prevent the need for shims because you set it down and you set it, you put just a little bit of downward pressure on it right where you know it's contacting the wood so we can make sure that's good and tight to our sled. That glue will fill the gap and harden under the edges that are not touching. Those will act as the shims. And then what I'm gonna do just for extra securement, I'm gonna put a strip of hot glue on the back. I should have put this all the way up against the stop here, but oh well and then a little bit on the side as well, just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere laterally. Here we go, now this one is securely attached. I'm not gonna try to move it around, but before I send it through the planer, I will wiggle it to make sure it doesn't wiggle side to side. I'm gonna wait for this glue to cool before I do that. Now we're just gonna continue on with the other pieces we were gonna put on here. Alright, so now that we've got perfectly flat level pieces here, um, we just got to pop them off our base here and then we can run them through normally through the planer and we'll have two parallel sides. And there you go, it was as simple as that. So I got four red oak beams here, perfectly flat, perfectly square. Well, let me rephrase that. <clears throat> Two of the sides are perfectly fat, flat, perfectly parallel, not perfectly square. And again, like I said, these were just rough pallet wood and that is no gaps under the level. That's a simple way to not need a joiner in your wood shop. All you have to have is your planer, which is one of my top tools that I recommend people get when they're starting out is a planer. Table saw, planer, stuff like that. Those are important tools that you're gonna need in the early on. So we might as well, instead of going out and buying a joiner, which can be three to 12, 13, $20,000, depending on what size you're looking at, get one of these, make one. You'll learn a lot and it'll work pretty much just as well. If you enjoyed this video, watch this one over here. I think you'll like that one too. I'll see you guys next time.